Have I got a treat for you boys today. Welcome to another Torpid cast. Look at these players. We got Swifty on the blue team rocking his Lord Commissar. Fighting in the name of the Emperor himself. Who's he against? It's not a joke. This is Rostam. The Aryan Iranian himself. Underneath that helmet, you can see the brown skin and the blue eyes. The superior race. The greatest race of them all. And he's here to preach that to these Emperor Shills. Chaos Sorcerer versus Lord Commissar, and it's on Vulcan Pits, which, if you didn't know, happens to be a map that Swift himself created. So he's definitely on home territory here. But he's actually spoke about this before, and Swift says that he doesn't actually find his maps any easier to play on than anything else. If anything, it kind of puts him on edge. But we'll see how it goes in this instance. So I think the Sorcerer is one of the better heroes to be playing if you're fighting against Imperial Guard. Obviously the amount of AoE damage that he can apply is extremely useful. And Sigil of the Rift is great because it just means that you can actually use your Dreadnoughts. Because obviously uh, Last Cannon and Heavy Weapons Team from IG is going to kill a Chaos Dreadnought very quickly. But the Sorcerer has plenty of ways to get around that and deal with it. We'll see if that happens in this game. I did actually notice that Rostam was using the non-crushable cover over here to put his heretics behind it. That's actually good play, really mitigating their bleed so they didn't actually have to retreat and they got the, the finish of the cap on the VP and now sneakily capping the requisition at the side. Have we got the stop yet for the Sentinel? No, he's just going in to break the cover, but Rostam needs to be very careful. He is going to lose a CSM model very soon if he doesn't retreat, but he does. Might be a nice Doom Bolts here. Oh, spot on. Spot on. Only kills three Guardsmen, but they definitely have to retreat to that squad. And now the Sorcerer is free to charge into this one, and there's only the Sentinel poking away at him. Commissar's down here, decapping Rostam's natural rec point. Uh, na natural VP point, should I say. What I was going to say is, as you can see, he's captured the rec point over here and the power node. So he is... He Swift has managed to get control of this side of the map, but he has lost control of the right-hand side. We still don't see no stomp on the Sentinel, but that's because Swift is rushing Kadashans, which honestly I think is pretty legit. Sorcerer does get infiltration quite easily in the form of the worship from his heretics. And heretics are easy enough to deal with anyway. You don't need the stomp super early on. It's not like you're fighting Tyranids or Orcs, where their melee is a lot more threatening. I do expect to see the Power Sword quite quickly, especially because Rossam ended up getting 2 CSM. 2 CSM is typical versus IG, I must say, but Rossam's build, perhaps not typical, to go for the 2 Heretic opening like normal, and then to get the 2 CSM. So he does actually overextend his Sorcerer in this instance, that's going to put him behind quite a lot. As you can see, he's currently got no gens up, whereas Swift has a single gen. But it's expected that Swift wouldn't have a lot due to the fast Kadashans. Kadashans really showing their power melee prowess right there, stripping that CSM squad of over half of its health in seconds. So, Rostam has rebought the Chaos Sorcerer, which is great. Gives him a little bit more field presence. I think he's a good force multiplier, but the problem is... At this point, he doesn't have a lot of the map, and he doesn't have any power. So I'm not really sure about this build. He also doesn't have an aspiring champion, so this IED could be quite problematic if the heretics run straight past it. We see some more decent Doom Balls coming in. Sorcerer unfortunately didn't have full energy, so he only shot out three Doom Balls and not six. I think Swift is trying to bait him into the IED. Oh my god! Wow. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh, reliable the heretics? And he did. That's it. <laughs> Both heretic squads annihilated. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure about going two heretics versus IG. For precisely these kind of reasons. I mean, even if he got the Aspiring Champion. It's not going to do much in combat, especially if the IG decides to go for the Kadashans, which 
Honestly, against the sorcerer, you kind of have to choose that infiltration worship. If you don't get the Kadashans, the Havocs are just going to wait next to a VP, like here. And you're going to go to cap it, and they're just going to point blank open fire on you under infiltration. And you're going to get killed very quickly. I think it's too risky. You need to have the Kadashans. Of course, you can hear the infiltration worship, so that's something to bear in mind. If the, you suspected that he was going to play that little trick. Nice Doom Balls. You, and the heretics were down here doing the worshipping, you'd be able to hear the like um, the humming of the worship. So that would be a heads up for a washout, you know, around in a radius around there, you could have something like Havoc's way to snipe you. So this is going incredibly well for Swift so far. Pretty sizable VP lead of about 100. Rostam has now dropped his generators, but by the time he's done it, Swift has dropped his full farm as well. So they're roughly equal in power, with Swift having a slight advantage due to owning this non-noded power point on the north-west side. But in terms of army compositions, you'd have to say that Rostam is at a massive disadvantage, with only two units to the four of Swift, and Swift having Kadashans, and an upgraded hero, as well as Stomp. I mean... Rostam doesn't even have Eternal War on either of his CSM. But Swift at the moment, I feel like he's overextending. I don't think this push is really beneficial because as you can clearly see, he's not going to be able to get the gem bash and this has forced off most of his army and let Rostam come out again. I think dropping a turret down somewhere like here or here would have been very beneficial. And capture these two wreck points because they're at this point fully matured. Capturing them would be very beneficial to Swift and hurt Rostam a lot. He has gone for two CSM, so he is, of course, quite dependent on requisition. How much is this point? Okay, so pretty much every requisition point on the map at this point has fully matured. Some cheeky decaps would be very influential. I don't see any upgrades yet on the Chaos Sorcerer, which is curious. I trained for this Lord Commissar and the Kadashans come back out of the base again, using that lead by example that's granted by the Power Sword and the Commissar, swiftly gets rid of those Chaos Space Marines and they go barreling back to their base, knowing that on the way to help them is a Chaos Dreadnought. But I really don't like this idea of going for vehicles as a first purchase in Tier 2 was against the Imperial Guard. I think out of all the factions in this game, especially in 1v1, the Imperial Guard have just such mighty AV. And they've got very good transitional AV. Even without fielding a heavy weapons team, he can still get the Sarge on the Kadashans, and it's such a good generalist upgrade, you're going to get it anyway. So as you can see, that's pretty much the first purchase that Swift has gone for. Before he even gets any Commissars or Plasma Guns or starts thinking about that, he's gone and got the Sentinel Missile Launcher and the Kadashan Sarge. So there you go, two forms of AV already on the field, he's not even seen a Dreadnought. And then the Chimera is going to come out. The Dreadnought's not going to have the impact it needs to force off the Guardsman, or at least it usually doesn't when I get it. And then all it takes is a heavy weapons team with a LAS cannon, and you're in bad times. Now, it has to be said, well, it has to be said the bloody auto cannon on that Dreadnought's doing a lot of work right now. Another nasty IED. Unfortunately for Swift, didn't actually kill any of the CSM models, but they're going to be in base healing for quite a while. But as I was saying, normally the last cannon from the heavy weapons team of IG is extremely powerful and effective in dealing with vehicles. It's one of the highest damage, if not, I think it might actually be the highest damage AV setup team in tier 2 that still snares. But because Rostam's playing as the Chaos Sorcerer, he can always get Sigil to counter that. And if you're relying solely on a Sentinel and Kadashans to defeat a Chaos Dreadnought, that will not be enough. However, Meltagun Stormtroopers, in addition to what he already has, could be very effective. If he hadn't already purchased the Power Sword, I would recommend getting the Xenos Power Claw. But because he already has the Power Sword, that's probably not the most efficient of purchases. One thing that I'd recommend for Rostam to do... Oh, he's actually doing it! I'm quite surprised at this. He's going for Mark of Khan CSM. I do think that double Mark of Khan CSM is amazing versus IG Gun Tier 2. Whilst you very much need the range DPS in your CSM in Tier 1 to fend off the Sentinel, 
In tier two, you don't need it anymore because the damage of the DPS on the Sentinel itself, the impact of the stomp, it's just, it's not that impactful. You can kill the Sentinel much quicker and your units are a lot more durable. Therefore, swapping the ranged weaponry out for the Berserker loadout is extremely effective. And when the Berserkers start a melee charge on the Chimera, they can pretty much chase that indefinitely. The other nice thing is, it makes them quite easily able to handle the Lord Commissar in 1v1 combat. So if you're sending, sending them off to the peripheries of the map, they're, they're going to get you a lot more map control and map presence for a similar cost. I mean, if these guys had bolters, the Commissar would be able to solo both of them quite easily. But as you can see, once they go Berserker farm, they're proccing a few specials, the Commissar is in serious trouble. He does not want to fight them on his own. He needs to get stubbornness and he needs to stay with his allied guardsmen if he wants any chance of beating them. Swifty is well aware of the threat of the Chaos Sorcerer potentially getting the Sigil of the Rift and so he's gone for the Melter Stormtrooper purchase. I think that's a very wise decision. And this should see the end of the Chaos Dreadnought at this point. Corn Berserkers though are making very short work of the Stormtroopers. But the Sentinel should just offer enough damage to kill it. One more shot. Yep, that's the end of the Cursed Dreadnought. He shouldn't have gone for it. It's too much of a commitment. On the bright side, at least he's forced Swift to go for some Melter Stormtroopers. So they're not going to be highly effective. I mean, they're not even going to be moderately effective against the rest of the composition that Rostam has. I think they'll mostly perform a role of scythe capping and gen bashing. Kanishan is coming in for the flank here after the took over the victory point on the far side. Rostam going for Plague Marines. Sound choice, no doubt. Help pick off both the Chimera and the Sentinel, since the Sentinel is now number two. With Stomp and the Missile upgrade, I think it will be very beneficial to try and pick that off as soon as possible. Do we see any Commissars yet? No, we don't. So these Guardsmen are still in their tier one state. Swift pushing forward to go for another Gem Bash. He's getting quite unrelenting here, and the VPs are still massively in his favor. We're looking at a 150 VP lead to Swift. Where are the Plague Marines? Oh, they're coming out now. If they can get that missile off? No. They missed the opportunity. I was going to say, if they get the missile off and they can snare the Sentinel in this instance, that could be the doom of it. And that could be all it takes in order to start a bit of a comeback for Rostam. He has snared the, the Chimera, and I'm not sure that Swift has actually noticed that the, the Plague Marines are in the middle of the army here. Unfortunately, the micro from Rostam isn't really sufficient, and he's not chased down the Sentinel with the Plague Marines. So the Guardsmen are just going to deploy out the Chimera, and easily repair it back up to full HP. I'm not entirely sure what the Kadoshans are doing, just waiting here on their own. And I'm also not sure why they're taking this fight. They're going to get overwhelmed quite badly. Perhaps not the best time to get your Mark of Corn upgrade, Rostam. But I really do like that he's going for double Mark of Corn. That's really cool. The Sentinel is destroying some of its own mines that Swift deployed, and that's not helping the Guardsmen. In fact, I think the mines have snared the Chimera. So this double snare is going to really scream over now. Blood letters on rear armor and the Corn Marines. Yeah, that's a dead Chimera. Massive blunder. So in using that mind drop global, he actually screwed himself up there and resulted in him losing the Chimera. A bit of a ballsy play here by Swift. He's lost the Chimera. He lost the Melter Storms, which must have happened on the east side here to the other Berserkers. I didn't even notice that. So he's now actually being outnumbered by Rostam in terms of squad count. Yeah, he's going tier three. I mean, he certainly has the power for it, but will he be able to maintain the requisition and the map control? I'm not so sure, and I think this could be the start of a bit of a comeback for Rostam. Should have actually kept engaging there with the KCSM. Obviously, he saw the threat of the IED, but... I mean, if they planted an IED actually on themselves, it's obviously going to hurt the Kadoshans more than the Berserkers. Kadoshans being such a high model squad with lower HP per model even if the overall squad itself does have higher HP. So one would predict that Swift is going to be going for a fast Lehman Russ at this point. 
but given the units that are already on the field with a Havoc that can easily transition into a Las Cannon with the support of the Chaos Sorcerer, potentially getting Demon Armor to put shields up and protect them from range damage, potentially getting the Teleporting Armor, teleporting himself forward and using the Global to bring the Havocs closer, or just getting the Sigil of the Rift to help move the Havoc around. Combine that with the Snare from the Plague Greens that are already on the field, I think that Lehman Rust is not going to last very long. But maybe Swift's going for a Beyblade. We don't know yet. I'm not sure. Heretic's quite overextended in the center here. It's just gonna survive. Brave to send them in alone just with the Chaos Sorcerer. I guess Rostam is feeling like he needs to take the momentum that he's gained in killing that Chimera while he has the higher squad count and really Precious Swift, and he's doing it well. He's now got the two VPs, and he's nearly brought it back to an even number. He's also got most of the gens of Swift destroyed at this point. Swift only has the actual power node at this point, and no actual generators. If we look at the respective incomes, Swift is getting 24 power per minute, whereas Rostam is currently on 54. And he's going tier 3 as well. I definitely see potential for a comeback here, however Rostam needs to be careful not to overextend. Whilst you do have to capitalise on your advantage, you need to avoid Ubris. And with the Ubris of course comes lots of bleed. A lull in the action. Swift needs to get all of his reinforcements and decide what is he actually going to go for on tier 3. He could purchase the Lehman Rust, but he hasn't yet. So I don't know if he's... Okay, he's purchasing it now. He has decided that's the best route to take. I agree on that. I mean, he's already ended up base locked. If he waits any longer to get a squad out, he's just going to lose the game. And the fact that he's ended up base locked, I think that's a good... A really good testament to the untimely nature of that fast tech. Proof alone that it was a mistake. But ultimately, it will all come down to how well he can utilize his tank and how well Rostam can counter it. Nice suppression into Doombots there, forcing off the Guardsman. Quite surprising, honestly, that the Sentinel has managed to live for this long. All it should take, in theory, is one Plague Marine shot, snare it, attack it with the two Berserkers. You can commit fully with one of them to bait out the Stomp, and then you get in behind it with the other Berserker squad and finish it off. But it's not happened yet. Okay, the Lehman Ross hits the field. Rostam is now tier 3, with two generators and Swift has none. But we don't see any tier 3 purchases yet. So the Havocs were getting the Mark of Zinch, but they had to cancel it due to the Kadashans getting a bit close. So we're going to see the Mark of Zinch Havocs plus the Plague Marines. Rostam's just doing a full retreat here, quite wise. He doesn't really want to overcommit in this instance. He's just going to solidify his forces, get his anti-vehicle out, and try and punish this Lehman Russ. I have a sneaky feeling that these mines are going to cause problems for this Lehman Russ. He needs to be very careful about moving around them. And I think this was actually one of Swift's greatest mistakes in this game so far. These mines have done jack shit to assist him. I mean, they're delaying the Berserkers here, but honestly, they're not doing much anyway. And once again, look, they're suppressing the Guardsmen. They're not really helping him. To be fair, in this instance, because he has the two Commissars, he should just use... He should just retreat the Guardsmen, let them get a safe distance away, and then use the Commissar summary execution to get them back in the fight. Yep, he's do he done that well. That was it. That was exactly what we wanted to see there. So now the Plague Marines are isolated. And against Double Guardsmen and Lehman Rust, they're just not going to do enough damage. They can't out DPS both the Guardsmen repairs. But we do see the last Cannon moving up under infiltration. Very brave, to be honest. It's only got one model. If the tank focus fires the last Cannon, you probably can kill him quite easily. Uses a flare to reduce the range, so the Havoc needs to get out of there ASAP. Not going to be able to kill it right now. He needs to ambush it, does Rostam. He's going in way too deep here. The KS, the 
KCSM were quite split up there, so they didn't get the snipe on the Sentinel, so that's going to live even longer. But Rossam is holding off, and he didn't lose his natural VP for very long. In fact, he's only just losing it now, which means that he's still going to be in this game. And soon enough, he's going to actually have a tier 3 super unit out. I think a Land Raider Phobos in this instance would be pretty brilliant. That would be an extremely hard counter to the League of Rus. Oh, the, the Retreat Path saved those Berserkers. If they went over the IED there, they would most definitely be killed. Rostam choosing not to fully reinforce a lot of his units. I think getting at least an extra model on both the Havocs and the Plague Marine would be quite prudent here. I think this is not bravery, I think this is just recklessness to only have one model of these squads. And he's chosen to get Terminators. No Phobos, no great unclean one here, but Terminators. I suppose he recognises that he does need to get a unit out really quickly so that he doesn't bleed any more VPs. And of course, I think we all knew he was going to get the auto cannon on them because he needs more EV to deal with this tank. Commissar is just about going to escape out of that situation. Lima Russ goes in to try and fi provide some supporting fire, but the last cannon was waiting for it, so it's quickly going back out of there. No real threat, though. Certainly getting frontal armor shots is not going to do enough damage on its own to really... Well, it's not even going to dent that Lehman. But it pulls out of there. It's deterred it for now. We do see the demon armor upgrade. Nice. So using the demon shield from that in order to reduce the range damage that the units take when they're moving through it. Also gives Doombots a nice fancy effect when they fly through it. Swift needs another unit. To be honest, in this instance, if I was Swift, I'd just get some Kaskin. I'd really focus on trying to bleed out all of his Space Marine forces. And I just ignore the Terminators. They're going to be such a pain in the ass to try and kill. Though if he did get stubbornness on the Commissar, he could tie them up for quite a long time doing that. So again, another lull in the action. The armies facing off with one another. The Commissar in this instance is going in against the Terminators, but he's completely isolated. And he doesn't have stubbornness, so he's going to die way too quickly. I really do not agree with the purchase of a second tank here. I think you need to diversify your threats. You already know that Rostam has so much hard AV on the field. He's got Plague Marines, he's got a Last Cannon Havoc, he's got Auto Cannon Terminators. That's three sources of really hard AV, and he's playing as the Sorcerer, so he can easily get Sigil of the Rift, he can easily teleport them around using his Warp Mobile. It's just not... It's not going to work. Look at the damage in the Sentinel. So he's going to try and focus the Sentinel down, that makes sense, that gets rid of another thing that can contribute to Swift's map control. Oh, the AoE is all coming in now. He's playing it really risky by only having one model of the Plague Marines. Oh, I didn't even notice, but he's actually built a second Havoc. I'm not sure that was really worth it, but in that instance it definitely did work. Got rid of the odd commissar and stopped him chasing down the plague marines. Is this a rocket run? It is. I'm not sure it's going to hit the other model. It didn't. So he managed to kill the heavy ball to have a. Wait a minute. No, he didn't. He didn't even manage to kill the heavy ball to have a with a rocket run. Oh, Swift, you've thrown, man. This is over. Even the Karashans go down. 
And with that now, it seems that Swift is trying his best to make something of this dire situation he finds himself in, hunting down the Chaos Terminators with his double tanks. But I think that was, yep, that was a war from the Chaos Sorcerer and taking them straight back to base. It is going to be 50 power that they've got to pay to reinforce that lost model, but honestly, Rostam is not too concerned about power. He's got 120 power at the moment. And at this point, given that he's on 90 pop and there's only 100 VPs left in the game, I don't think he needs to be getting another tier 3 unit. He just needs to really isolate these tanks and kill them. And win via the VPs. He's doing this thing again with the Havocs only coming out of base with one model. We can see that he actually did try and reinforce this second model, but was a bit eager on pulling the Havocs out of base. Plague Marines sat there in the Demon Shield, aren't really taking any damage, but in return they just can't break the armor of the Demon Rosses on their own. He needs to get something to cap this VP. I think, yeah, the Heretics are on that. Do you see some Kasakin on the way for Swift? They will definitely help him deal with all the normal Space Marines. They're not going to help too much against the super heavy infantry armor of the Chaos Terminators, however. I think it might be quite useful to get the Executioner upgrade on the Demon Rus, the large plasma cannon. I think that would probably be the best bet to take out the Terminators at this point. It would definitely kill the Berserkers very quick as well. But he doesn't really have many resources. He's got the power, but he doesn't have any requisition. But the problem is that little stockpile of power that he's got at the moment, that's 66. It's not going up very fast. He's got no generators. So he needs to really preserve every bit of power that he can. Looks like he's going to send his whole army for a large push down the mid. But Rostam's prepared. He's even putting up shrines. So he's definitely expecting it. He does need to... Where's the... The last cannon Havocs are still in base. He needs to get them forward real quick. I think Rostam's forgot about them. Cask can actually on a little spec ops mission going down the side. Oh, he does actually get an execution. Sweet. That will definitely be effective. You can see it's melting away, those Corn Space Marines. Unfortunately, he's shooting the Sorcerer here, which is not very useful. But that's one Berserker squad and one Sorcerer gone. The other Berserker squad's getting wrecked by the Lehman. The Kaskin have successfully started decapping the natural VP of Rostem. But they need to get the hell out of there. That auto cannon is vicious. Oh my god. They went for a nade spike and only ended up nading themselves, so that's the Kazakin gone. And Swift just doesn't have the resources. Neither the wreck nor the power to actually be able to replace them. So I think this is game. I think Rostam's got it. He just needs to hold the middle now. Lord Commissar was pretty massively overextended. He'd have been far better off trying to deal with the Berserkers on the far side, but... Oh my god, he even teleports after him with the Terminators. That was brave. But he does get the pick off on the Commissar, and the Terminators are going to survive, so... I don't know what Swift can do at this point. He's got no red for the rocket run. His rocket run was a complete whiff, didn't even kill a single setup team. And his composition is merely Guardsmen and two tanks. But there's three sources of hard EV on the field. I don't think it's going to be enough. with focus firing the guardsmen here because he knows they're going to go off and try and cap. Yeah, they're going to get that cap. Terminators need to be careful. They're going to start losing models real soon now. Yeah, they need to get the hell out of there. The execution is brutal. This is actually really damn close. So the heavy bolter last cannon. The heavy bolter havoc is now upgrading to a last cannon. And that's in addition to the other last cannon that we've seen, but Rostam clearly had forgotten about. This is so much AV. Where's the Plague Marines? Did they die? They must have died. I don't even know where that happened. The Terminators need to get the hell away. They've just not got enough HP now. I don't know why he had them sat there just trying to 1v1 an execution of Lehman. Still, the Berserkers make easy work of this Garsman, but of course it can just use Summary Execute to cancel his retreat, and it probably should, because he needs these tanks on the field as soon as possible. If he loses the VPs at this point, he's screwed. And there's even a tank coming out now for Rostam. I mean, that's probably going to be the end of it. I mean, Swift is really trying his best here. He did repurchase his Commissar. 
and should be able to get the decap, which will keep him in the game for a short while longer. But I don't think this is going to be enough. The Berserkers are probably... No, there's no way he's going to finish that cap. He's going to actually cut him off. He poured a bunker in. He's built IEDs. I mean, I'm not sure what the, the strategy is there. Certainly creative, but whether or not it's effective is a whole different question. I don't see why Rostam would ever get inside that bunker. I think at this point, Swift is direly desperate and doesn't know for sure what he actually wants to do. But... He has to do something real quick. This has to be the final push. He hasn't even had time to fully repair the second Lehman. I don't know what he's doing. Why is the Lehman not being repaired? Come on, Swift. Repair your damn tanks. But both of the last cannons are currently under worship. Even the Predator is. And the Predator has a twin-linked last cannon itself. So he's got the Lehman here to protect his natural VP, the, um, the injured one. While well, the guys can go for the cap, but... Oh, no, man. Oh, he went for the repair bunker. Yeah, that wasn't... That didn't work out too well. He needs to move the last cannons up. VPs are so close at this point. That tank is going to get slotted. It's going to get a rear arm shot. No! Lehman misfired. He shot the Havoc instead. Turn your tank around, Rossam. What are you doing? These one model Havocs, they're just getting killed instantly. Oh dear. What the hell is this? What on earth? The Terminator's healed. Okay, the Terminator's are healed and they're coming out. I don't know what is even going on here. I guess this object between them is a line of sight blocker, but... Why is the tank not moving? <laughs> it's going to get hit again, though. No, don't walk in front of the Havoc. Okay, you can't see it through there. He's just going to go straight for the cap with the Terminators. The Commissar is doing a last stand on the left-hand side against the Corn Marines. Now, they can't just cap with him there. He's going to kill them. I think he's used lead by example he has, so he's just spamming specials. Corn Marines are getting flung left, right, and center. And Swift has got another tank out. Christ. I don't know how Ross has managed to throw this. I mean... Use the IED. I forgot about that, but it's not even going to be necessary. He's going to win this. Rossam is on four VPs, and he's got nothing. Nothing can stop these guys from capping. He's thrown the get. This was a strange game. It's been a throw after a throw. It was definitely Swift's game to take in the initial instance. Then he threw it, losing his Kalashans, wasting his rocket run, and just. I don't know. Poor tactics, but I don't know what the hell Rossam's done. He didn't reinforce his Havocs. And he sent his Predator up on its own without the last cannon support, so it got slaughtered. It's just not gone very well for him. There's only one VP left, and that's it. It, it ticks down. Rossam has lost this one. Somehow Swift has made the comeback. Let's look at the map here. Every requisition point on the map. Every single one is owned by Rostam and is fully matured, giving plus 30 requisition. Swift didn't own any of them. But apparently the IG economy doesn't care, because between the two fully upgraded level 4 guardsmen, and wow, look at that, level 4 Lehman Rush with the Executioner Cannon, how often is it that you see a tank that has just under 1,600 hit points? 1,452 on the other Lehman level 3 with its default cannon. Tanks made the difference, in spite of all the AV that Rostam had. I have to admit, I don't think he handled it very well. If you've got two Havocs with last cannons, Plague Marines and Auto Cannon Terminators, even a Lehman Rush, a Lehman Rush Rush shouldn't be able to counter that. But you need to make sure that the Havocs are fully reinforced. I'm afraid if there's an Executioner Lehman on the field that started to get some levels, you cannot be running around with Havoc models only on their own. They're just going to get killed very quickly, and they did. 
and I'm not sure at what point the Plague Marines were lost. That's definitely something I'll have to check out in the replay of the video, but that was obviously an influential turning point. If you can snare the Lemans, it's a lot easier to kill them, because then you force off the guards with support and they can't just cruise out of there with ease. Things to bear in mind for Rostam. Of course, he was also playing the Chaos Sorcerer, so I think the Curse of Zinch in its current iteration is pretty much useless. I mean, we've seen it in multiple instances where he used it on the Garsman, and he would kill one Garsman and it'd blow up, but it only does percentage-based damage, so it's only doing 15 damage to nearby enemies in radius 7. That's not a lot when the Garsmen start leveling up. It's not a lot, period. So they just got sort of knocked out of the way, but the rest of the squad didn't care and just went to do the decap anyway. I think swapping out the Curse of Siege for the Sigil of the Rift would have been very beneficial. Teleporting Plague Marines behind the Lima Rust for rear armor shots. Teleporting your Havocs further forward to finish off the tanks. These would have been the type of plays that were necessary in order to take down these Lima Russes and prevent them from leveling up and allowing Swift to get the comeback that he ended up getting. But well played to Swift. He was tenacious and he made the comeback. We always like to see comebacks. I think we also like to see Rostam lose. So the Aryan Iranian failed us today, but don't worry, he's going to have a chance at redemption in the following cast, because this was the first of two games that Rostam played against Swift that ended up being pretty close. So tune in the following week and I'll have the second one for you. But for now, that is us done. Thank you very much for watching this cast. And top it out.